my beautiful mates. In this video, I will be making house breakfast using clay. And I even included a little calcifer to keep the food warm while we talk, so let's get into it. For starters, I began with creating the pan. Initially, I was not sure how to do this since I wanted the sculpture to be super small, but I found a really useful tutorial which suggested using a sauce container to create the pan mold. With that said, I scoured my drawers and found this stainless steel sauce pot which was in my desired size. To make the pan, I placed a thickish sheet of clay which I gradually pressed across the sides of the pot. I did this slowly while constantly making sure that the base of the pan was as flat as possible. After flattening the clay sheet, I marked my desired pan height with the blunt end of my blade by holding my hand still and gently rotating the clay pot. After some testing, I have found this to be the easiest way to get a consistent pan height. When I was satisfied with the guideline, I came back with the sharp end of my blade and cut off all the excess and fiddled around with the pan for a bit to make sure that my clay was evenly distributed. Once I was satisfied with my pan, I set it aside and started working on the pan handle. To make the handle lightweight and use the least amount of expensive clay as possible, I folded a rectangle out of aluminum foil, tapered one side, and gave it a bit of a curb. Afterwards, I covered everything in clay and made sure that my sides were as flat as possible. To make the handle look cooler and more realistic, I added some extra volume towards the end instead of keeping it the same thickness. After comparing it to the pan to make sure that the size was good, I smoothed it as much as possible with my fingers and popped it in the oven. While waiting for the handle to cure, I began mixing my other colors. For my yolk, I mixed yellow with a bit of red to tone it down a bit. For the bacon pieces, I mixed a variety of orangey, pinkish, and brownish colors to represent the fat, the muscle, and the skin. I really like the process of mixing custom colors because it gives me a chance to mindlessly fiddle with clay, twist it, turn it, flatten it, and constantly adjust it. It's a really relaxing activity to break off the constant focus of sculpting. With the handle cured and cooled down, I began sanding it to remove the main imperfections. I usually find it very difficult to encase aluminum foil and clay while also building up a shape, so I often just rely on sanding to achieve the result I actually want. To finish up the pan, I create a dent by pressing in the handle so I have somewhere to attach it later. Once I am happy with where my dent is, I gave the pan a quick blast of heat using my hair dryer so that it can start hardening just a bit. Once I removed the clay from the sauce pot and made sure it was circular, I put the pan in the oven to cure. In the meantime, I began testing out ways to create my mini fried eggs. In my first iteration, I smushed a white clay ball and used a sharp tool to carve out a more interesting shape. After some refining with a silicone tool, I created a tent for the yolk with a ball tool. After sticking in the egg yolk, I carved out the egg a bit more, flattened the yolk to make it look like it respects the laws of gravity, and cleaned everything up using rubbing alcohol. Upon reflection though, I think it would have been best to have done this using gloves because the amount of dust that ended up in and on the clay was so bad, I had to repaint everything. However, I do not regret pre-making my colors. It did make the painting process a lot easier. In my second mini fried egg iteration, I decided to put some dents in my white clay ball before smushing it because I thought the carving process left me with a lot more cleanup than I actually wanted. This was actually much faster and more natural looking, so I recommend this rather than the first way of creating the egg shape. 
Apart from this, I applied the same techniques of cleaning up the edges with a silicone brush, making a dent for the yolk, and popping in a yellow clay ball. I also ended up giving my eggs a quick heat blast so they can set in place because I wanted to overlay one more egg on top without risking the base ones losing their shape. Once I was done with my three eggs, I made sure that they were slotted nicely against one another and left them on the side in order to finish up the pan. At this point, I did not want to sculpt any extra food without making sure they would actually fit into the pan, but I got too excited with the eggs. Once the pan was cured and cooled down, I began sanding it. In this case, I chose to go for wet sanding because I realized that the height of my pan walls were uneven, meaning that I would have quite a lot of intense work to do. It's also worth noting that I purposely used a high grit sanding paper at this stage so I could leave scratch marks which will give my pan some extra texture once painted. Once sanding was done, I connected my pan and the handle using a tull up of bacon bond. After cleaning the excess glue up with a silicone brush dipped in alcohol, I popped my creation in the oven to let the glue harden. After curing, I quickly painted the pan using a mix of dark blue and dark brown acrylic paint. However, the secret to making it look like metal came from me also mixing the tiniest bit of gold acrylic paint, which makes the whole pan look like it has been covered in some sort of Teflon, I guess? In all fairness, I did not do this on purpose, I was just messing around, but I thought the result was quite good, especially when dried, so I thought I'd share it with you. After checking the placement of the eggs against my pan, I discovered that I had space for one more egg, so I quickly did it in the same manner that I did the other eggs. Again, I did not apply any heat to this one, so I could easily overlay it on top of the others. With that done, I coated the base of the pan with some bacon bond and carefully applied the itty bitty fried eggs, making sure to press them in nicely. To set them in place, I blasted them with a little bit of heat so I can move on to making the bacon. For the bacon, I began by flattening down the colors I pre-mixed previously using a rolling pin. I then started overlaying sheets of colored clay, focusing on going from darkest to lightest with bits of yellow clay in between to represent the fat. When doing this, I made sure that my sheets were not always the same size, shape, and thickness, so that each bacon piece would look different. Once satisfied, I lightly pressed my clay tower and cut the clay into a block shape. For each of the bacon pieces, I cut a thin slice of clay and fiddled around with it using my hands to create a wavy look on the sides, you know, that one characteristic to bacon, right? In all fairness, making the bacon was the hardest part of the process, and I was very nervous that it would not turn out well. However, looking back at it, I'm pretty happy. For the bacon bits, I applied them to the pan the same way I did the eggs. I used bacon bond. However, here I made sure to make them a bit wavy by gently folding them before sticking them onto the pan to get that fried bacon look. At this point, I realized I had been a bit too greedy with the eggs, so I quickly removed the small fifth egg using a blade and repositioned everything gently to make the pan look more balanced. Once I was done with this, I popped the pan into the oven to fully cure. After everything was set, I went back in with yellow acrylic to make the egg yolks a bit more intense and with some white to cover any leftover dust that was attached to the clay. This actually took quite a long time because my hand kept shaking so 
Don't forget to be patient and to use a very thin brush on the edges. To give the bacon a bit more of a fried look, I tinted those bad boys yellow by adding some watered down yellow paint and lifting up most of the excess with a cotton bud. To make calcifer, I used a UV putty which I pressed onto the sauce jar. Afterwards, I added some more putty on the sides and used a silicone tool dipped in alcohol to guide it into more of a pointy, flame-like shape. Initially, I thought the sauce jar was a pretty good idea since I had used the same sauce jar as a base for my pan, but I did not take into account that the thickness of the pan walls meant that this calcifer would not properly fit. Regardless, I chose to continue going in this direction because I was too scared to work with the UV putty directly on my clay. It's really sticky. After curing, sanding, and sharpening up calcifer's flames, I added some light coats of yellowish-orange that got a bit more red towards the top of the fire. Once I was happy with the transparency of the paint, I sealed everything with a UV resin and let it cure under the lamp for a few minutes. In retrospective, honestly, this was such a daunting process to work on since everything was so sticky and hard to paint. In the future, I think I'll just go with some sort of clay that becomes transparent once cured. Something like that must exist in this world. To seal up my food and give it some oily shine, I mixed the same UV resin with a bit of yellow acrylic and carefully applied it with a toothpick and later with a brush. I also added a bit on the pan walls to make it look like the oil has been splattering everywhere during the cooking process. For calcifer's eyes, I flattened a white sheet of clay and cut out two small circles using a clay cutter. To make his pupils, I make two black dots using a small dotting tool and sent it over to cure. In the meantime, I gently fit calcifer's flames around the pan, super glued them, and went over the excess glue with the same color I used for the pan. Once my eyes were cured and hardened, I attached them to the flame with super glue and added his cheeky little smile with some leftover paint and with some very, very shaky hands. I was really tired by this point. To create the stand for my pan, I cut a square of foam out of a bigger panel I had and used a wood stick to draw some random lines for a woody texture. Afterwards, I colored everything with dark brown and stippled an even darker brown for just added dimension. With this wood-like stand done, I super glued everything in place and finally let out a relieved breath. Howl's breakfast, including my little calcifer, was done. And with that being said, let's see them in all of their glory.